Hey friends, in this video we're going to be comparing Andrew Huang and Baby Audio's plug-in transit to Ableton's already inbuilt modulation and macro system. If you're unfamiliar with transit, it's a plug-in that allows you to utilize a large macro controller or other controllers to sweep through multiple parameters at once. But just like over 95% of available plugins, they rarely offer anything that you can't already do with Ableton Live if you simply take a little time to understand the tools that you already own. And so in this video, I'm going to show you why Mama's right when she says, we already have Transit at home, honey. And I'm also going to be fair and go over ways that Transit can do things in a different way than Ableton, offering some potential workflow advantages if it resonates with you. Likely even Ableton power users are going to learn a lot from this video. So let's do it. So first of all, this is just a guess, but I imagine that the inspiration behind Transit likely came from Ableton's macro system. First of all, I have this little meld voice and it sounds like this. Now, first of all, let's say I wanted to reduce the bitrate with a redux. Right? But let's say I also wanted to add some delay at the same time. Well, Ableton has a really cool way of doing this. Let's go ahead and first of all, put these effects in a group. So I'll select them both and hit Command or Control G. And then you'll notice that there is a shell around the effects. So I can just click on this guy right here. This is the macro controls. Now you'll notice that it immediately comes up with eight of them. And then I can add all the way up to 16 macro controls. Or in this case, let's go ahead and subtract them all except for one. So now there's only just one macro here. If I click this little M button, let's go ahead and click on rate. And I'll add that to the macro by clicking map. And that's the workflow here. Let's go ahead and click on the dry wet and then I'll add that to map. And so this macro control now, if I turn off mapping, you can see it has control over two different parameters, right? But it's not behaving in the way that I want it to. Right? You can see that as I pull the macro down, the bitrate starts at 20 hertz, and that's just going to yield a disaster, right? <laughs> so, you know, what you can do is you can go in here and click map, and then if you look over here, you can see that the macro mappings actually have ranges. So instead, I'll just flip flop this, and I'll make it so that when the knob is all the way down, the bitrate is all the way up, and then I'll flip flop it, right? So now we have. So yeah, by the flick of a wrist, <laughs> right, you can control multiple parameters at once. And these lists can get insanely long. So real quick, before we open the transit plug, and I'm just gonna shrink both of these down. These are a bunch of different macros that I've created. So take a listen to these. <laughs> and one more thing I should point out is that if you've never explored just audio effects and you went up to audio effect rack and you just dragged any of these racks into Ableton, all of these Ableton audio effect racks have one or multiple macros that you can just add into your effect chain and really get something going really fast, right? So if you've never explored that, you really got to get in there. Now let's go ahead and open the transit plugin and take a look at it. So here's transit and here's our macro knob here. And as you can see, as I move the macro knob, you can see uh, the animation showing the different things that are happening within the plugins, right? So for our same sequence here, this is what this specific preset sounds like. So now that you know what Ableton macros can do, maybe on the surface you might think, well, there's nothing new under the sun. Andrew Huang and Baby Audio have just put together another repackaging of Ableton's macro system. And I think that that is only partially correct for a multitude of reasons. So first of all, before everyone puts me on blast in the comments, when you click on this hamburger menu up here under the macro aspect of this, it's not just a, a knob that you can use. You can also use an LFO, you can use an envelope follower, a sidechain, a uh, gate and a sequencer. These are different ways to interact with these controls. So what's cool about this is that, you know, if I choose LFO, what will happen instead is that now this is going to be sweeping through the ranges. Okay, as I play this, take a listen. Right, so now we're just using an LFO and it is basically taking the macro knob and moving it back and forth, okay? And then there's there's different ways that you can interact with the macro itself as opposed to just this manual way, right? 
So now before you think, okay, Transit has, is obviously light years in front of Ableton, there's also ways to easily do this with an Ableton, okay? So again, the story is a lot more complex than just, oh, one is better than the other. But the first thing that I think is really important to point out here is this. See this curve right here? Inside of Ableton, up until Ableton 12, there wasn't a way to add curves. And real quick, by curves, I mean not obviously an automation. You can obviously make automation curves in Ableton. I mean curves when it comes to the travel of the macro knob. Okay, and let me show you why this is so important. All right, so I'm gonna exit out of transit and turn it off. Let's go ahead and build up a new effect. So I'm gonna get this phaser flanger here. And let's say that, for example, what I wanna do here is I want to add a mount, I wanna add dry wet, and I want to uh, change the frequency of this phaser all within one fell swoop. Okay, so let's go ahead and open the macros by hitting Command G or right clicking and choosing group. Okay, so you can do this with any plugin or any Ableton device, and I'm gonna open my macros. I'm gonna subtract everything out and we're just gonna have one macro. So now before I do any actual mapping, I wanna show you what I actually wanna accomplish here. So I'm gonna put the center up somewhere right here. What I actually wanna do is I wanna make it so that the sound gets wigglier, <laughs> right, as I turn up this macro, so something like this. Right, something like that. that. That's what I'm going for. But now let's go ahead and go over what the problem is. So I'll go ahead and click map. I want it to do the dry wet. I want to do maybe the feedback, the amount and the frequency. And I want to sweep this macro all the way up until it gets wiggly, right? So let's go ahead and listen to what happens now that I do this. <laughs> okay, so there's obviously some problems here. So let's work out the problems first. Obviously all the way up. That's just crazy, right? So let's go ahead and take our modulation frequency and maybe make it something more reasonable. Maybe the very maximum would be 10 hertz. So that's gonna sound like this. <laughs> and then at the highest ranges, obviously feedback should not be that high. So maybe we should make it something more like, I don't know, like 30 or something so that the absolute maximum won't start to peak. Okay, so we're getting somewhere, but you'll notice that down low, I don't really hear a change between, yeah, like 10 and 30%. This is a problem because I really need the dry wet to be up a lot higher, a lot earlier. And you can see that right now, the way the macro system works, at least in this specific configuration, it makes it so that everything is linear. Everything is just linearly from zero all the way up to 127, okay? And, and nothing is moving in an exponential or logarithmic way, right? And so you might think, okay, the transit definitely has the advantage here. That's actually not true. With Ableton 12, we now have a way to do this differently. So instead of using this map to the macro, check this out. I'm going to go to Ableton's modulators and I'm going to grab a shaper. I'm going to put it inside of this Ableton group here. Now check this out. Something that I can do is I can instead make it so that the dry wet engages near immediately. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to make a curve by holding option like this. I want a smooth sweep here, but I want it to be pretty immediate. So check this out. What I can do instead is I can take the shaper and I can map it to the dry wet. Now check this out. This is the new addition. If I go over to shaper and I switch it over to manual mode, I can manually sweep through this parameter shape. And you'll notice that with manual all the way down, dry wet is all the way down. But as I sweep it up, look how fast I'm starting to add dry wet. Okay. That's amazing. But you'll notice that it's also not going all the way up. I definitely want it to be in pretty quick, but I don't want it to be just at 50%. I want when this line is all the way up here, I want that to mean 100%. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click mod and it's gonna switch it to remote mode. So now when I get all the way up here, we're up to 100% dry wet, right? Now that's pretty cool, but that's actually not what I want. And this is what's so cool about Shaper and what makes it way more flexible than the system inside of Transit. Check this out. So not only can I sweep in pretty quick, but I can add more points of resolution to the travel of this knob, okay? Let's say, for example, what I would like to do is something like this, where that goes up about halfway right here, and then it starts to ramp up even higher, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing right here. So now we have a stepped system, where let's go ahead and, and take a look at the dry wet. Now check this out, as I sweep up, it, it goes up to a halfway dry wet pretty immediately, but then when I go up here, we're stepping up pretty immediately to 100% wet, right? So check this out. Now all I have to do is click on map and I can map the manual knob to my macro. 
So now we've taken care of the dry wet issue, but we still don't have too much action down low on this knob, right? So something else we can do is change the range of this macro. We can say, okay, I want the rate to be pretty quick, pretty, pretty soon. So now we have something like this. Now I think we're getting pretty close, but something else I wanna do is I want the amount to ramp up pretty quick. I don't want amount to be linear either. So what I can do instead is I can grab another shaper, slap it in here, switch it over to remote mode. And what I think I'd rather do is just have a, a kind of faster ramp for my amount. So I can click on map. I can delete this from this system, okay? I can instead use this system to interact with my amount. And of course I need to switch it over. Right now it's in LFO mode, but I just, if I switch it over to manual, you'll notice that now amount will come up a little bit faster, okay? And so now I'll, all I have to do is click on map, click on manual, map that to my single knob, and now we have And so of course you can take this as far as you want to take it. You can make this list super long and you're not just limited obviously to one effect. So real quick, one of the most common comments that I see on this YouTube channel and in my Ableton courses is, wow, I didn't know Ableton could do this natively. And I've said it before, but it's true. Native Ableton devices can do 95% of what plugin companies offer you. You simply have to understand how to set it up. Understanding what you already have is probably the single most valuable thing you can do versus blindly buying plugins. If you really want to upgrade this year, maybe consider instead investing in your own mind. If you can't confidently say that you understand how to effectively get the music that's in your head to come out of your speakers, then maybe consider joining my Ableton online courses. My course Courses are super high rated for a reason. They're the largest and most robust A to Z coverage on Ableton available. Between the songwriting, mixing, sound design, and live performance courses, you get lifetime access to over 100 hours and growing of constantly updated lessons. We also have a private Discord with near 2,000 members where you can get your Ableton questions answered in near real time by me and other members. You can get feedback on your music and so much more. Also, the folks at Ableton recognize C to stage in their educational program and give my students discounts on Ableton software and when they want to upgrade. And yes, the courses are updated with Ableton 12 content and are constantly being updated for a lifetime. We run the biggest sale price of the year during Black Friday. Now there is limited enrollment this year because I can't take on a trillion students at once. So if you want to get notified when the sale goes live, you can put your email up here or down in the description and I'll send you an email when the sale goes live. And yeah, I recognize that this is a hard pitch, but I know Know that I can do more for you and your music than any one plugin or one software could ever do. Because what use is a tool if you don't know how to use it? Also, if you don't vibe with me, I totally get it. Perhaps consider education from someone else this year. But please make sure that they're credible. They have a long track record and they have rave reviews on their educational offerings. My courses have five star reviews across the board because they work. Okay, let's get back to it. So now we can add this wild phaser to everything else with this sequence and have some fun. <laughs> okay. So going back to transit, as promised, let's go ahead and look at this hamburger situation. So we know that we can affect the macro with the LFO. We can also affect it with an envelope follower. And this is a really cool feature. If I turn this thing on, whatever incoming gain will actually affect these different knobs. Let's take a look. Now, I think that this is a really cool system for multiple reasons. You can use this envelope follower to take the gain of whatever instrument that you're using, uh, and it will actually change the position of the macro knob for you, thus interacting with these effects. And there's a lot of really cool use cases for this, okay? But again, it's not like you can't do this in Ableton. Let me go ahead and show you something. So, so first of all, the LFO. If I were to choose, if I were to choose to use Ableton's LFO, okay, and I were to drag this into here, let's go ahead and do this with the, uh, yeah, delay pressure. So for example, I can click on map, and of course you can map an LFO to a macro. So here we go. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? And not only that, you have the ability to take this same LFO and map it across your set. So, so the flexibility here is just unbelievable, right? But let's go ahead and take this out of the equation and talk about the envelope follower. So now with the envelope follower, I can do the same thing. I can go ahead and just map the gain here. That's actually awesome. <laughs> I love that. Sick. I love it. So as you can see, I can also use an envelope follower within an Ableton. And, and also, I should say, if you haven't noticed this, envelope follower can now be sidechained elsewhere in your set. And again, here we go. Let's go back to transit. There it is, sidechain inside of transit. Transit also has the ability to take signal from elsewhere in your set and sidechain it. So then we have both gate and sequencer mode. And of course, Ableton has built in now with Ableton 12, you have built in sequencers and ways to interact with these macro knobs in a similar fashion as to what's here in transit, okay? So I want you to understand that I'm not putting Andrew Huang or Baby Audio on blast here. That is not my intention. My intention here is to simply show you that, that likely over 95% of plugins that are offered to you are simply repackaged ways of accomplishing the same task that you can do within the DAW with the tools that are already available to you, okay? And so the next thing that I really think that is really important to also point out is that if I click plus here, these are, this is a robust set of effects, okay? These effects are awesome and I, I, they probably sound really good and they probably are really dialed in, as in like, it's hard to make them sound bad, okay? These are, a great selection of effects. But again, none of these effects that are in here represent anything that Ableton Live can't do inside of it. And you really have to understand that this is a closed system, okay? This system right here can only make the effects that it has built inside of it. Within Ableton, I can create macros using third-party plugins, for example, right? So let me show you how to quickly do that. Let's go ahead and grab an Arturia Chorus. So if I drag this into here, we can see that if I expand this guy, these controls right here, I can map to things, okay? So if I were to right click on this and say group, I can now take these macros and map them to any of these macro knobs, okay? So the mode, the color, the width, and so on. And now I have control over these parameters inside of Ableton using a macro, okay? And you've already seen all the advantages there. But there's also a situation where you can have a plugin that does not have these controls available to you. But that's actually not even true. So let's go ahead and delete this and let's use a different plugin. So here's Sugar Bites Tornado, for example, one of my favorite plugins ever. If I expand this, you'll notice there's no controls here. Well, that's because I haven't actually told Ableton what it has control over. So if I click configure and I click on one of these controls here, you'll notice that it appears. And the reason that they don't just list all the controls here, most of the time, if a plugin has a shitload of parameters, they're not gonna list all those here because it's just too much to list. You actually have to tell Ableton what you wanna use. So, you know, if I were to go into any of these controls, all I have to do is click configure and then click on the control here and then you'll see that it appears, okay? So again, I could group this, open up my macros, map them to my macros, okay? Like Ableton's flexibility is unbelievable if you actually know what's possible. So going back to transit, and, and after you've seen all this, you might be wondering, okay, what are the actual advantages of transit? And are there any? And I believe, yes, there are actual advantages here. And one of the main advantages is this. Check this out. There are so many presets in here. It's, it's actually kind of unbelievable just how many different presets you have in here to mess with, right? I mean, this is awesome. And I bet that there'll be artists that release preset packs for this. So. Obviously, setting this up in Ableton kind of takes some time, okay? But what's cool about setting it up in Ableton is that you can set these macro effects up to do exactly what you want them to do. You have to ask yourself, is having a huge selection of presets something that's valuable for me? Is it worth $120? Or I think that right now this, this plugin's on sale for like 80 bucks or 70 bucks. Is, is it worth spending $70 to get access to all the presets, right? Now remember, these presets are gonna behave in the way that they do. And of course you can get in there and tweak them to you know your heart's content, but are the presets worth $70? That's the real question 
most of the time when it comes to shopping for plugins. And so that's the first advantage. The second thing is that this offers a different workflow. Everything that you're looking at right here is on the surface, right? Everything that you'd want to do with Transit is, is right on the surface, okay? The, 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 the user interface has a convenient layout, okay? So usually, again, with over 95% of the plugins that you're going to run into out there, you're going to be running into a situation where it's, the, it's a convenience factor, right? They're set up for your workflow, okay? There, there's an advantage to the workflow. Is there anything on the palette right here that you can't do with Ableton? Of course not. You can do 10 times, maybe 150 trillion times more things with Ableton, but is it as convenient? That's the real question here. So my take on transit is this. If you're in a DAW that's not Ableton or Bitwig, you could probably really take advantage of transit and have a lot of fun with it because likely your DAW doesn't have the capabilities here to be able to sweep through a bunch of different effects with a single macro knob or with the LFO and so on. I think that there's a real advantage here for folks that aren't on the Ableton platform. But I think that the main take here, and hopefully this is now your take now that you've seen um, the flexibility inside of Ableton, understanding the tools that you have in front of you is far and away more important and what you should spend your money and your time on than simply buying the next plugin. Unless all that you wanna do is have access to a bunch of presets. In that case, what an amazing plugin and what an amazing platform for artists to be able to make presets for you to check out. But even that argument starts to fall apart when you understand how many Ableton racks are available to you on the internet. Ableton racks are always forwards compatible. So I'm not really sure when Ableton's macro system came out, but you have probably near two decades worth of Ableton racks that you could download uh, to put into your effect chains and take advantage of macros. The possibilities are legitimately endless. I don't think that you could live long enough to try out all the things that have been made for Ableton racks in your lifetime. I just don't think that that's possible. And every week it's growing, right? So again, if you like these macros that I've been using here, you can download them for free off of my Gumroad. Uh, the link is down in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that this inspired you to get in there and start working with Ableton's macros and then using the shaper to be able to get the macro knob to do what you want it to do. As always, if you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time.